scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Now, Jesus spent, Jesus spent a major part of his ministry mentoring the disciples who would later become apostles. Isn't it incredible the kind of ministry of Jesus? You can learn so many things, so many leadership principles that Jesus was so busy, but if you take, if you calculate in the scripture, he, the most of his time was spent building people more than crusades. There were crusades, there were healing meetings, but most of the defining moments as recorded in scripture was either a one-on-one -on -one conversation or a very strong mentorship session. So we see that in one of those sessions, Jesus began to teach them, especially John's synoptic account. John began to teach, uh, to tell us that Jesus was talking of the Holy Spirit and our father, Bishop, um, Bishop Mike, Okonko, when he was reading it, I said, this is excellent. John, let's, let's revisit that scripture again. John chapter 16 from verse 8. Jesus is teaching now. John 16 and verse 8. And when he has come, the spirit of God now, he will convict the world. The world. So he has a ministry to unbelievers. Every unbeliever on earth from America to Europe, to China, the Middle East, every unbeliever is a bona fide, should enjoy this dimension of the Holy Spirit's ministry. He does it in partnership with the saints. Hallelujah now. Yes. The world evangelization that we talk about is the ministry of the Holy Spirit, but in partnership with the saints. And there is a reason for that. Because we have become an extension and a habitation of his house. So everywhere you go, it is the Holy Spirit going through you. You see. He says, back to that scripture please. When he has come, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Then Jesus says, of sin, because they do not believe in me. So the sin here is unbelief. Number two, he says, next verse now, of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Verse three, he says, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. So Jesus told us that when you see the Holy Spirit on earth, realize it's not just there to serve creation alone, but that every unbeliever on earth, the Holy Spirit is ministering to them. And I tell you, as we begin to set the pace for the return of Jesus, we are going to see that ministry in the life of unbelievers like never before. You would see people break down in malls, hospitals, in their rooms, and with no human participation. Unfortunately, because many people are not determined to see to it that the gospel gets to the ends of the earth. And the Holy Spirit in his might and power, like he did to Saul of Tarsus, will continue to convict men and the unbelieving world. Because the Bible says only a fool will say in his heart there is no God. We live in a world today unfortunately where across the nations of the earth there is a growing decline in spiritual conviction. 
it's being replaced there is a whole demography that is very vocal about their refusal of God and it is a dangerous thing I pray that it will not happen in our lifetime that we'll see a people that will vocally reject God and say as a nation and as people we reject God the Bible said blessed is any nation whose God is the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ so the Holy Spirit has a ministry to creation and he has a ministry to unbelievers do you know what this means that means any unbeliever you see around no matter how stubborn no matter how arrogant I can assure you by the integrity of scripture there is something there are tokens around the life of that man pointers by the spirit are we together now they may be under the influence of liquor or drugs or all kinds of things but at a point in their life they find themselves resorting to sit down and say why is my life like this that very factor convicting them is the holy spirit and i assure you he's patient enough to follow them this is bringing hope to someone maybe you have a child and you are now wondering why will i give birth to a child and in my lifetime i watch this child become so anti-christ that is an embarrassment completely against my conviction conviction do not give up the Holy Spirit is still working in that child and one day that child will follow his friends and meander a conference like this and just sit quietly and that will be the end of it do you believe that the hymn writer says thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done. Can we sing it one more time? Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your son and leaving your spirit. Your work on earth is done. Hear me, man of God, evangelist. As you stand with that sinner talking to the person, you are not alone. Before you got there, the Holy Ghost was already working. I'm encouraging someone who has been thinking, I, I, I talk to people and it looks like they are not listening. The Holy Ghost has an assignment to every unbeliever. That means you must be hopeful about people. No matter the level of decadence, if God could use Paul, if God could use all kinds of people, he's a master at picking people from nothing and bringing glory out of their lives. And in the name of Jesus, as we prepare for the return of Christ, we will see some of the most unusual people heralding the gospel that you knew this person to be a disaster maybe an armed robber and now fire falls upon them refined by the power of God there will be this group of people as a testament that the Holy Spirit is working you believe that shout aloud amen. amen but now this is a believers conference so let's talk to ourselves now the third assignment of the Holy Spirit as revealed from scripture is his ministry to believers and this is where I'll spend a few minutes and then we pray. I recap one more time that the Holy Spirit's first assignment and ministry is to the entire creation as the life force. Number two, to unbelievers, convicting them, the Bible says, of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Hallelujah. Number three, the Holy Spirit's ministry to believers. A bulk of his ministry lies right here because the believer is the most aligned personality that can work in partnership with the Holy Spirit to birth and to advance the purposes of God. This is the reason why the greater part of the Holy Spirit's investment is in the life of the believer. An unbeliever is God's creation, but because of his state of disalignment, God cannot do much with him as far as birthing his eternal purposes are concerned. Are we together now? The most aligned vessel that can be used. Remember the Bible says in a great house there are all kinds of vessels. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we learning? 
So, let's explore very quickly his ministry to believers. And for our discussion tonight, I will just run through about five of his ministry to unbelievers. Five, very quickly. Number one, the first ministry of the Holy Spirit to the believer is to provide guidance and direction. Please write it down. In as much as the Holy Spirit plays a vital role, in fact, I hope you realize that what you call eternal life is actually him. It's not just what he brings. When you receive Jesus Christ, the personality that comes to live in you in honor to that confession is not Jesus. The personality that comes to live with you to honor that confession is the spirit of God. Jesus today, the Bible declares, is seated at the right hand of the Father. Is that true? But an extension of his ministry, the Holy Spirit has come. Is the Greek word aras, alos, parakletos. That means an extension of the same kind. Jesus said, for he is with you and shall be in you. This is what he taught. So every time you call the name of Jesus, the personality that answers to that name is the Holy Spirit. His first assignment to believers, please write, guidance and direction. Guidance and direction. Two scriptures very quickly. Acts chapter 16, please, from verse 12 to 14. Acts chapter 16. You would notice that I love walking with scripture because I do not trust anything that is outside of the jurisdiction of scripture. The boundary of God's commitment to the believer is his word. Hallelujah. Outside of the jurisdiction of God's word, there is no guarantee for God's commitment. And then scripture is the basis for the believer's conviction. Your conviction has to be grounded on something. If it's not grounded on scripture, it will be grounded on culture, superstition, and just wise sayings that do not carry any power. Are we together now? So just saying I believe is not enough. There must be a basis for your believing. All right. So it says, and from there. Did I get that right? Acts chapter 16 from verse 12 to 14. Uh-huh. Verse, let's look at 13. I hope I did not. Um, 14, the Holy Ghost spoke to them. Did I miss that scripture? No, no, no. I think I've missed the scripture. Let me give, let's try Acts 13 and verse 2. Acts 13 and verse 2. Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. The Bible says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, directing them now, now separate to me Barnabas and separate to me Paul for the work which I have called them to do. The Holy Ghost was responsible for providing that guidance and that direction. Let me tell you the difference between guidance and direction. To direct, listen please, to direct means to give you a picture of your end with respect to your goal. To guide means to show you the steps to get there. So direction focuses on the end. Are we together? But guidance focuses on the process. So if I'm directing you out of this church, this is what I will say. There are three doors here. You can use any of them. Say, for instance, just go straight and then turn left and you are out. That is not guidance. That is direction. When I begin to guide you now, I teach you that there is a staircase here. You may fall. Even though you know where you are going, if you are not guided, you can have direction. Direction without guidance does not guarantee your arrival. Are we together now? So you need to be both directed and guided. Most of us, what we are praying for now, now is not direction you already have an idea that God has spoken to you that you are a kingdom financier and he's told you okay real estate is the business that will lift you that is direction but has he guided you hmm. are we together I pray God is speaking to someone yes direction focuses on the end the goal guidance now shows you the steps and thou shalt hear a voice from behind. Is, it, is that in your Bible? Saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it and you will find rest for your souls. 
It says, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Take note, path and feet, path and feet, path and feet. You can have light in your path, but if you do not have light in your feet, you are not directed, you are not guided. The spirit of the living God guides believers. Jesus himself said so. Hallelujah. John chapter 16, my apologies. The scripture we looked at first was John. I think type in, I put Acts mistakenly. John chapter 16 from verse 12. Jesus himself said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Why can't you bear them? Let me tell you something. Do you know the other things that Jesus was saying here? He said, I have many things to tell you. What are the other things? Read the book of Acts. Read the book of Galatians, Ephesians, Corinthians. Those were the other things he wanted them to know. But they did not have, you needed the Holy Ghost to be in you to understand that part of the lecture. Jesus said there are many other information that will come. So when Paul came, he came with authority as one mandated to bring those other things that Jesus said would come. So I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. 13, How, however, King James says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he says he will guide you into, look at this scripture very carefully. That means having the truth alone can still destroy you. You need to be guided to understand and to use it well. Because you are not the only one who uses the truth. Satan too uses the truth. In fact, he depends on the truth to lie. There is no basis of lying without knowing the truth. So, it is not only you who waits for the word. Satan uses the word also. He did that to Adam. He did that to and Eve. He did the same thing to Jesus. It is written. I know it too. Are we together? So, he says, having the truth is not enough. That when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you. Not into truth into all truth there are dimensions to truth your truth may not be all the truth in fine arts there is what we call perspective is that true when you draw so you can tell an individual to draw look in this direction and capture this church if you ask me to draw from here you are not going to see pastor. You are not going to see those who are here. And if I have to depend on your drawing to interpret what is happening in this building, there are many things that will not be captured. So the Bible says you need the Holy Spirit. He is the one who will show you the other side that culture may not show you. He will show you the other side that your well-meaning, you know, Christian experience may not show you. There are many dimensions of truth that may not be as at yet captured in our Christian experience, but needed for our overall excellence. It is the assignment of the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth. 14, it says... He will tell you things to come that you will glorify me for he will take what is mine and he will declare unto you. Jesus is speaking with confidence that when the Holy Spirit comes, number one, he's the spirit of truth. So trust his guidance, he's saying, that he will guide you into all truth. I wish I had time to pause here and reflect in my own life. If you are not guided to show you the truth also means to show you the future. Hallelujah. Because you see, what is now, according to scripture, is not what will be in the next 10 years. The Holy Spirit, as a businessman, can tell you the realities that will happen if you were to suggest 20 years ago how the world will be now. You will most likely fail woefully. Am I right on that? But the paraclet of God, knowing the future, the Holy Spirit does not depend on prophecy to know the future. He is God. He can start leading you to a path that looks strange, but you will be light years ahead of many before they catch up. You see, you are not just going to follow civilization. You will literally create it. The man who invented the internet that has changed the world today, they were not following a path. No, they literally shaped the civilization of a generation by inventing, bringing in an idea. Is 
Is someone learning? The ministry of guidance. There are many of us right now, respectfully speaking, the troubles that we have gone through in various shades are proof, if you are to be honest, that we ignored his guidance. Can I tell you in this end time, the guidance, of, the guidance of the Holy Spirit may mean the difference between life and death. Because there is a limitation in all men. Naturally speaking, we walk based on the sense realm. And the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Please listen, dear people of God. There is a way that seems right. Seem means it's a limitation of your mind and your perspective. It is not right, but it seems right. And the trouble is you can be following that path for 10 years. Is after 10 years you will know you were wrong. So the Holy Spirit can save you wasting your time because destiny is a function of time. Listen carefully. You do not have all the time to keep making mistakes and correcting it. You will spend your whole life archiving mistakes and their various answers, not living an effective life. The Holy Spirit can save a lot of people trouble if they would listen to him. But we live in a world today where we see him just as a religious luggage that we just have to carry since he came together with Jesus. And we now carry and we, we assume that kind of mindset and we feel the Holy Spirit has nothing to tell me about my life, my church, my family, my business. After all, he's some kind of religious person. We're facing money issues here. We're facing common sense issue here. And he stands like in the similitude of that dove that he is. Watching you frustrate the wisdom that can change your life. Redefine possibilities in your life. And some of us with our childishness, childlikeness and foolishness all together we embraced him because there was no alternative and we embraced him and said if you can lead me I'm stupid enough to follow and he says follow me and all that we keep seeing is a world of beauty and glory mysteriously so continuously so let me tell you the truth the Holy Spirit can turn anything if he turn darkness to light he can turn any destiny. Listen to me. You have given things of lesser value a chance to guide you. Why don't you in this conference open up your heart fully and say, I am tired of trusting statistics as important as they are. I am tired of trusting the figment of men's imagination. Spirit of the living God, you were not introduced to the earth after creation. You were the reason why it happened. The Bible says in the beginning, God, before science, in the beginning, God, before intellect, in the beginning, God before internet don't change the formula in every beginning in the beginning of your business God not a shop not supermarket not a loan not capital in the beginning God in the beginning of your marriage God when you compromise that formula you stand the risk of not being guided there is a way that seemeth right Jesus had this to say about Satan, that he can appear as an angel of light. Do you know what that means? You can be deceived sincerely thinking you are in the will of God. And for many years you will go around in circles hoping you are right. Only to find out that there are many people today in old age angry and they wonder it looks like they were scammed and cheated by life because satan the bible calls him a thief never calls him a friend john 10 10 that the thief cometh not but for to steal do you know what that means before he comes he has to verify whether there is something in your life worth stealing worth killing and worth destroying that his presence in your life is proof already to you that there is something worth stealing killing and destroying the spirit of the living God given by God available to guide believers the the first expression of guidance of the spirit we see in the Bible happened in Matthew chapter 4 we don't have time for that the Bible says as soon as Jesus is it in your Bible that when Jesus was baptized of John declared to be the son of God the next thing the Bible says is and the spirit drove him to the wilderness how do you go to the wilderness after such a glorious moment You've now been ordained. You should go to the city, not the wilderness. 
This is the Holy Spirit for you. Sometimes after powerful moments, the city may not be where to go. He may tell you, go to the wilderness. It may not make sense, but that is where you will return with power. Is someone learning already? So guidance and direction. Number two, very quickly. What is the second ministry of the Holy Spirit to the believer? Hmm. The Holy Spirit, according to scripture, is the revealer of the will and the word of God. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of the will and the word of God. I wish I had the time to discuss this issue of the will of God. Because you see, the primary assignment of the power of God is to bring you and to keep you within the jurisdiction of God's will. The immunity of the believer is within the jurisdiction of God's will. Satan's assignment is to have a basis to attack you by taking you out of the will of God, either through deception or through ignorance. Are we together now? Provided you are within the will of God, your immunity stands. Provided you are within the will of God, the full potential of your Christian experience will continue to manifest. So when Satan comes to destroy, he does not just destroy or strike you, either through whatever means. He has a plethora of options to deviate you to come outside the will of God. The power of God has an assignment to bring you from wherever you are into the will of God. That is the assignment of the power of God. Everything functions in the kingdom with respect to the will of God. Please do not forget this. Everything functions in the kingdom with respect to the will of God. Your excelling in life is not just based on your ability to think or to, 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 to you know, to create a course of a pathway for yourself as important as that is it is the degree to which you are aligned to the will of God per time per season that is the degree to which you excel Jesus himself when he came watch this he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me Luke chapter 4 when you read from verse 15 it was a manifesto of his reason for coming Paul reiterating why Jesus came, he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, not to do my bidding. Even Jesus in Gethsemane said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass off me. If it be possible, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So the Holy Spirit is the revealer of the will of God. You can start out life having all kinds of ambitions and there's nothing wrong with that except that when you submit your destiny to his editing, he begins to gravitate you sometimes towards paths you never plan to go but that is where your glory resides. You may start your journey intending to be a great doctor, a great engineer, a great and that is wonderful eventually as you walk with him with every sense of love he now begins to gravitate you towards a path sometimes a path that no one in your family has followed virgin dimensions that looks like you are going nowhere except that you will stumble into glory that your children's children will eat from it is true he can reveal the word of god he can reveal the will of God. Studying scripture without his influence will only lead you to a lot. If you study the Bible without the leadership of the Holy Spirit, all you are going to stumble across is annoying scriptures that contradict themselves. That is all you are going to find there. Do not be over-righteous. And a demon spirit came from the Lord. A lying spirit. You read all those kinds of ideas. What kind of a God is this? I mean you say God is love and God killed this one. That's all you will study. It takes the Holy Spirit to bring perspective. Is someone learning? Say amen. Please shout amen again. Yes sir. Many people have attempted to read the Bible like a novel. Now in truth. The Bible is an archaeological book. The Bible is a literature book. The Bible is a historic book. So you can find all of those, those, those schools of thought there. That is the reason why the Bible must be both opened and the seals unlocked. Just because you open your Bible does not mean the seal has been unlocked. No. It must be both opened 
and the seals unlocked. If the seals are not unlocked, you are only going to see English or history or archaeology. It is when the seals are unlocked, you will now begin to see a mysterious cohesion. Scripture joining with scripture and it will now begin to make sense. Is God helping someone? Holy Spirit, why am I here? I'm tired of escorting men around the corridors of destiny. I need to find perspective and bearing for my life. Spirit of the living God, would you show me the path to my life? And you open the word in the place of prayer and it comes. Jeremiah, while you were yet in your mother's womb, before thou camest forth, 1 verse 5, it says, I called you and I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. And the young Jeremiah said, ah, but I am a child. He says, say not I am a child. Do not say I am a child. Wherever I send you to and whatever I ask you to say, that you will do. Hallelujah. Many people are living their lives. Do you know? Do you know? Psychologists teach us, and, and this is a very intelligent church. Psychologists teach us that one of the principal factors that sponsor fulfillment is a sense of progress. Am I right on that? That the moment you find out that your life is stagnated and pegged at a level, you know you are stagnated when the only thing growing in your life is your age. If the only thing growing in your life is your age, eventually you will be frustrated because the human being was not designed to live in that state of perpetual stagnation. Psychologically speaking, there are six fundamental factors that translate to fulfillment. Number one is called security. Number two is called variety. Number three is called significance. Number four is called growth. Number five is called achievement or accomplishment. Number six is called love and acceptance. You only find fulfillment when these things, these factors work together within your life. So if you are bankrupt of any of this, eventually you will be frustrated. Our world today is full of angry, jealous, bitter, frustrated people because number one, they have no sense of security. Their lives is full of a lot of boredom, no excitement. Are we together? There's no sense of significance that comes by reason of the value that they provide. And naturally, there's a lot of rejection. It's the worst thing that can happen to any human being to be rejected. And then there is no sense of growth. There is no sense of impact and contribution. As a result, they are frustrated. The Bible says a broken spirit can dry up the bones. That a person can literally be sick of frustration. Listen, I want you to begin to look to the Holy Spirit to give your life value and meaning. Is the reason why people begin to resort to all kinds of satanic and demonic things as they join cult groups, they join all kinds of things. Are we together? So that we will not lose a generation because they are all around trying to look for fulfillment. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of the will of God. There are many apostles and prophets and pastors roaming around the streets of nowhere. Wasting their lives and their destinies. There are many Esthers and Deborahs. Many people who should be making destiny count. Serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. But many have not trusted the Holy Spirit enough to reveal the will of God and the word of God. I'm standing here today as a testament that he is able to reveal the will of God. He can bring beauty and glory out of your life from nowhere to a place of grace. Is someone learning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Number three, we have to wrap up. Shalaka Subayeda. The Holy Spirit. Is the revealer of the word. I didn't have the time to give you all the scriptures. You may want to write one under point two for reference. First Corinthians chapter two from verse nine to twelve. Very powerful scripture connected to that point. First Corinthians two nine to twelve. The Bible says that he's able to reveal the will of God. Number three, for sake of time, he is the confirmer of the word. Now I like this. 
The Holy Spirit does not just guide and direct. The Holy Spirit does not just reveal the word of God and the will of God. He is the confirmer of the word. What does it mean to confirm? To give it life. To insist that what the speakings of God do not look like a lie in your life. To bring performance to the speakings of God. The Holy Spirit is a confirmer of the word. In Mark chapter 16 and verse 20. Mark 16 and verse 20. Mark chapter 16 and verse 20. The Bible says, and they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming not their word. Confirming the word with signs following. Confirming the word with accompanying signs. New King James says. Confirming the word. Every time God speaks concerning your life. Every time pastor stands here to declare over you. The confirmer of that word is the Holy Spirit. No wonder he had to appear before God said. The union of the spirit and the spoken word is what produces the miraculous. God by his spirit was already hovering around. And then God said, and there was, and he saw that it was good. If you want to see that it is good, then ensure the Holy Spirit is there before you begin to speak. The confirmer of the word. The confirmer of the word. If I declare upon you and I say in Jesus name be healed. In Jesus name may doors open. If it ever happens. The agency that is responsible for that performance. Is the Holy Spirit. And hallelujah he's here in this place. Our speakings. Listen. The confidence from which we speak. Is not ourselves. The Bible already told us that our sufficiency is not of ourselves. It says that our sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers. The word able there is qualified up to the task. The word sufficiency means the capacity to rise to the occasion without disappointing. That's the Holy Spirit's assignment. That you will say in the name of Jesus I will feed my mother, my father, and my siblings in their lifetime. And they may laugh while you are saying it. Because it looks like nothing around you looks like the word of God there. But the Holy Spirit begins to confirm. And there are many ways he does that. Generally speaking, all blessings come from God through men to men. So God begins to navigate people, circumstances that work for your favor. And in no time, that rejected stone. Ah. Someone lay your hands on your head if you can in one minute and declare that in the name of Jesus, every word that has come over your life, the spirit of God is confirming it. Someone go ahead, lay your hands on your head and declare. Are you praying in the name of Jesus? someone declare 10 years ago a prophetic word came over my life the Holy Spirit is still able to bring it to pass you are brooding over every darkness you are causing lights to shine from darkness the Holy Ghost is brooding over every darkness you are causing lights to shine from darkness no matter the situation brooding over every darkness you are causing lights to shine listen don't be surprised that after this conference fire falls on you and you who was an ordinary person by the end of this year you were a man of God that nations are placing a demand upon don't be surprised that whilst you are here you do not even have a single house of your own and by the end of this year do not neglect prophecy not when the Holy Ghost is there to confirm it listen the Holy Ghost came upon a virgin she said how shall these things be 
seeing that I know not a man, I was never taught as a young teenage girl that a woman could be pregnant, a virgin could be pregnant without a man. And Gabriel said, leave that to the office of the Holy Ghost. He knows how to confirm the word. Yours is just to believe it. The power of the highest, he says, shall overshadow you. Don't be surprised that you are in debt right now to the millions and to the billions, not even knowing how you will come out. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.